Hello everyone. Today's video, uh, after a little bit of a break, uh, will be about improving at master level. But of course, uh, all the advice I give is not exclusively for master. I mean, you, I'm sure, like also lower level players can benefit from it. Uh, but oftentimes, uh, a <laughs> lower level player uh, might benefit more from other things uh, and uh, not from focusing on what this video is about. Uh, but also, on the other hand, if you are in Grandmaster, uh, low Grandmaster, something like that, um, <laughs> and even like people above, like sometimes they would benefit from that. Um, anyway, I will just, uh, I think today will be a bit shorter. Um, I will just give you some general tips, some tips about like matchup specific things. Um, and uh, the first tip, and uh, I think this is actually the most important th uh, th uh, one. When you are playing um, and like you have like a de your build or is decent and um, like you have decent mechanics already and all that, um, one of the things like that will often lose you games is because simply you did something very stupid, and uh, like even uh, like in, in on pro level play that happens very often. And uh, also th this is uh, not just a tip like. Um, uh, for for like a ladder and practice and such that's actually when you play in a tournament when you are not really sure like what to do best against your opponent like you don't really know like how to exploit his build because you don't know him so well something like that try to focus on not doing something really stupid or like something stupid in general um, because oftentimes the player who makes less mistakes wins and not the player who pulls off like a fancy move I know that uh, casters always get happy and they always like they hype up like any kind of fancy move they see but in, r in reality um, like you can win a lot of games by not making stupid mistakes and um, just to give you some mistakes like don't think that your opponent is probably not looking right now so it's totally okay to run up that ramp with all your roaches and then blam he puts down two force fields and you lose like I don't know 15 roaches because well, your opponent was actually looking and he just force field the rest out and killed a few isolated roaches. Those kind of things can lose you games. Or, like, don't attack into, like, sie a sieged up Terran off creep. That's another example. I mean, of course, there's situations where you can do that, but just when it feels like kind of like a bad choice, just don't do it and, and, and don't, like, try to, try to get fancy same things like same thing like also uh, against um, against protos like don't uh, think that you can always kill them when they take a third base just like just play uh, like a solid take a fourth base and, and take two broodlords um, yeah those uh, that's um, those are some example but I mean there's there's other things um, uh, next um advice is i'm not i'm not sure like how many people do that but when you are really unsure like about what um like what what is going wrong analyze one of your own replays and then look at a replay of uh of the player that you copied the build from because probably uh well hopefully you copied your build order from someone who is better than you uh preferably a, a like a code s -Zerg player <coughs> or a very good foreigner um, and oftentimes you will probably be able to see that you put down like your cybernetics call like uh, three seconds late because when your gateway is almost done you're not sending the probe out yet you wait until the gateway is done and then you realize oh the gateway is done now I have to put down a cybernetics core um, and uh, like those kind of things like can uh, delay your whole build and, and it can really make a difference um, another thing with the whole analyzing, uh, you don't always have to watch the replay. Uh, I personally actually just like between games, I just think about like what went wrong in the last game. I just think about like what uh, should I have done better to win or even if I won, like like where did I make mistakes? Because if you like consciously think about it again, I think it will help you to not make those mistakes again in the future. And uh, another uh, one with like analyzing is you can also practice in your head. For example, if there's a certain opening that you have a lot of problems with, like, I don't know, when you're going for a walk or when you're drinking coffee, whatever, 
just like think a bit about like what will you try next time when you play against that you can like like play it through in your head and um if you ha like start to have an idea like like what should you what should you do a and then you think it through and and if you do that a couple of times you will actually have an easier time executing the whole thing because you don't have to think about it um while you're already playing because playing uh, and thinking at the same time is something that is very hard to do like if you have to think in the middle of a game like well what do i do now most likely you will lose the game just because you started thinking you nearly need like almost everything needs to go um like from routine and um because if you have to start thinking uh yeah it's just game over um and uh, yeah so i actually think that like practicing like certain scenarios in your head uh, can really help you for example like just like standard presser like Helly and banshee from terran if you really think like about like um do you usually like put down like spore crawlers too late stuff like that if you think about it in your head like well i should build the spores like at at around this time and if you think about it like a couple of times like maybe you will actually start remembering like while you play and uh well then maybe you will have less pr uh, problems with the uh, with that um Another point, I mean, this kind of goes in the direction of don't do something stupid, but uh, don't always try to, like, force, uh, like, a decision, like, early on, or, like, try to get a big advantage early on. It's simply not always possible anymore, like, in, like, how the, the game plays out nowadays. For example, against, in ZVZ, I think Ling Baneling aggression, it can work, but I think generally, the better your opponent, um, the better people are at defending it and if they defend well you will always end up behind so i think f like this is also like especially cvc uh, specific uh, that example um try to really like learn like a reactive defensive uh, play style uh, especially in cvc i think it's very good to learn that because even like at like grandmaster level there's many people who play things like ling ba uh, roach ling all ins which i think is really really bad like i think roach ling all ins should never ever work like early ones i mean i've been mid game or so like maybe there's some things that work and ling bane ling is better um especially because you can like just build some links and then more of a few bane links to provoke like an overreaction of your opponent but still if your opponent uh, plays really really good or close to perfection then you should not uh, be able to get an advantage out of this uh, because only if your opponent like misjudges the situation uh, i think he then he can uh, potentially overreact um so yeah don't try to like get big advantages early on try to get small advantages um and then just try to like um win the game later on um like to many people that's <laughs> a concept that is uh, not so known i guess because many people like like their like two base all ins or like maybe even one base all ins and that's how they win their games but like the higher you get the the worse those things become and at some point you really will hit a wall and and people just own you really hard if that's all you are capable of or if you rely very heavily on like getting uh, big advantages early on um uh something more common again like when you are ahead like when you got an advantage in whatever way you really need to practice to stay calm i mean okay like it's easy to say now but try not to get nervous i actually have i have that problem myself like when i get very far ahead against a very good player i actually get very nervous because um i i put a lot of pressure on myself that i can never ever lose now because i i personally think that i'm very good at like winning a game that i have already won uh, like theoretically um <coughs> and um it's very important that when you are ahead for every matchup you need like a certain plan like how you finish the game from there with a with like as little risk uh, of losing as possible for example against protos uh, protos goes for like a two base all in and you defend it you don't lose your third you have good economy and protos um well like takes like a delayed third or like but you, know, you just defend the all in and then you th ask yourself like well what do i do now um you know that you are quite far ahead um but then um th there's like some traps that you can fall into like one of them is for example 
like um, that your opponent like force fields you the ramp in your main base so you should spread overlords to see any kind of like incoming war prisms also you should be building especially if you are like quite far ahead build just build a spine and a spore crawler in every base makes you safe against dts makes you safe against well like i guess like air units are quite rare at that time but just being safe against DTs can save you like some losses because if you then decide to if you, your opponent takes a third base and uh, and you decide oh well i can easily kill him now but then you move out and suddenly like three dts are like in, in each of your bases well one in each i mean uh, and you start losing drones it gets chaotic like you get confused and then suddenly your opponent manages to secure a third base and then well uh, maybe he will be able to get back into the game so it's really uh, important to like think about all the various things that can go wrong when you are ahead and like have like a really a set plan like how you proceed from being ahead and in general with Berserk it's go for Broodlord and Fester as boring as that might sound I mean of course you can like it always depends on the situation but against Protoss usually the safest thing is to just get Infestors, Hive Tech, Broodlords and then attack and I mean if he's behind then usually he can't hold that and uh, against Terran it's kinda the same in CVC I mean yeah you just expand more than your opponent and in cvz like for example you can also just go for a drop like just go for like infester drops and just like sp spam his main base with infested terrans and uh, try to like contain him maybe for example on antigua shipyard you take the middle build spine crawlers there take the fourth base there and then just like turtle the middle and uh, the flanks uh, like next to the on the sides of the watchtower and then your opponent he can never take a fourth base and then you just go for brood lords and just like starve him out um but don't like don't try to like get in a hurry i'm i'm not sure how many of you uh, have ever played go before uh, but in, in Go, it's a, a board game, <laughs> there's even books like how to win a one game. Um, and uh, like a lot of, like often like the like the professional Go players, they say um, that is visible like uh, when, uh, on the board, like when a player started to get in a hurry, when he started to like panic and thought like, oh, I just have to like quickly finish the game now. Uh, because he's afraid th that his uh, superior opponent will like make some kind of comeback but but exactly this will often result in you uh, giving your opponent a chance to come back because you are falling into a hurry to finish the game and uh, yeah that's why it's really important to have like a good plan and to have the confidence that even if your opponent is generally better that once you have an advantage uh, well a decently sized advantage then that then you can like safely win the game from there and yes basically that um, now some more like matchup specific things I wrote down um, I mean that's not just for masters I guess in CVZ I would recommend uh, try to learn more than one style because if you're in masters maybe you also want to play a tournament sometime and maybe you will play a best of three um, and for that it's really important not to play like the same like unit composition every game for example in CVZ I mean fast layer is very common nowadays but you can go both fast layer with muters and fast layer with roach and fester so you should it's really good if you have like an opening build that always looks the same but ha that has like different follow ups because that can confuse your opponent so if you if you in the first game you play fast layer muters second game your opponent sees with a circling that runs into your main base oh fast layer again and then he thinks oh yes he's going muters again but then you you are also capable of going actually like fast layer into roach and fester well then that's very good because it will throw your opponent off guard um, without being like anything gimmicky or so um, something I, I wrote down for uh, CVT also is try to learn like be a, a capable of both going for muta and for infester style um, it's very hard to say when you should go for what but generally like uh, if you go for mutas um well you like muta is like way they're generally like the more aggressive choice um so you you can do that like on a like for example on a map where you're not confident like in uh, a longer game for example antigua shipyard um uh, there you might want to do it like antigua is maybe not the best example because it's actually rather easy to defend against mutas uh but anyway it's, i think it's really good um that you have like 
not just one style that you're capable of playing because uh, then you really have like no room to to switch uh, to switch up your play a bit and um uh again especially against Terran this is true when you get ahead don't get a, get a go into a hurry and attack the Terran generally like attacking a Terran is something that um only works like when you're very far ahead or you have broodlords um or ultralisks for that matter i guess um so, like, as it often said, like, in cast, like, get more ahead, take more bases, and um, build static defense against drops. That's very important, that you secure yourself, like, against things that can throw you uh, off your pace. Uh, and that, uh, like, often static defense helps you a lot. Leave a couple of circlings and bailings behind in your main base in case there's a drop. Those kind of things um, uh, can really save you games. Anyway, um, that's all I've uh, uh, for today. Um, please give me feedback how you like this format. If you have any suggestions on how and on what I should make a video about, uh, please tell me. Uh, in the last days, well, I was not too motivated, admittedly, uh, to make a video. That's why there was such a long break. Uh, but I also had like some problems actually finding something that I like to talk about because I don't just want to make like a video just for the sake of it I actually want to be like motivated to talk about it otherwise it probably like me sitting here with a not so happy face and like like mumbling something into my beard just kidding I mean my beard is not that big but anyway uh, subscribe to my channel leave some feedback good night guys <laughs>